Yay! Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Mushoku Tensei Episode 2! Um, they got some stuff to do. Give me a sec. So, first off, I'm proud to announce that I don't have to make fun of anybody, because so far there haven't been any stupid comments. The closest one was somebody who just wrote stupid comment, and it's like, okay, okay, nice, nice. I was expecting that, I was waiting for it. But other than that, nothing vitriolic or horrifying or super wrong. Definitely a couple things that I want to address, and that's what we're going to do right now. Let me just go and find them. Okay, first thing that I want to address is something that came up in actually a number of comments, um, and it seems like I've just made a mistake in terms of my phrasing. A number of people uh, argued that considering Neats or Hikikomoris as not good people is wrong and a generalization, and I totally agree. I'm sorry if you took that from what I said. Um, I was trying to say that specifically I am aware that Rudius is considered by many to not be a bad person and also is a Hikikomori. The two are interrelated, certainly, but not one in the same and are absolutely mutually exclusive you could be a good person who's just reserved it's totally fine um so just just a clarification a lot of people put a lot of effort into arguing back against that and i apologize i'm not trying to skim over your arguments necessarily i just agree with you and i didn't mean to imply that when i said it as somebody who has myself retreated into a, a world of living inside one room and ordering your food online for a while uh, uh i fully understand it i mean there's there's a reason that uh a lot of my branding around the the tiabu channel is actually hikikomori related like my my email address that i use for my business email the one that is associated with this account is hikikomori at gmail.com there's a reason for that i understand a couple of people mentioned that they liked using degrain filters while watching mushoku because the noisiness in the frame annoyed them find that interesting. It doesn't annoy me too much, I just noticed it, and I think it works pretty well. I also found out, um, partly while looking for the font to use for the thumbnails, I found out that the, uh, there's, like, an actual replaced ciphered alphabet throughout the, the show, which is a pretty cool idea to do that. I just, I like it. Um, I think my favorite discussions that are happening in the comments are around the question, how old is Rudius? And the people arguing both sides of it and all sorts of sides of it. Um, I think my favorite one of these is... My favorite one, I think, comes from Kasai Kohai. The conversation around whether Rudius is a boy or a man has always been a very interesting one to me. Personally I, speaking, I can't call the neat version of Rudius an adult completely. As someone who does have some tendencies to shut myself off for weeks at a time, uh, developmental and emotional issues can arise even from those few weeks of a lack of social interaction. If he's been a shut-in for more than half of his life, I definitely, I can't definitely say he's as much as an, of an adult as a normal citizen who went to university, got a job, and lives a life outside interacting with all sorts of people in all sorts of ways consistently those are experiences are what make us grow into adults so him lacking those leads to at least the at the very least an emotionally stunted individual which i think you can tell fits rudius to a t i agree i agree um especially i like the phrasing of i can't call the neat version of rudius an adult completely i do like that however i will say in a for example a court of law that doesn't stand up right you can't you can't claim oh I'm a I'm a shut in therefore whatever acts I perpetrated are a result like I I can be tried as a minor it doesn't work backward that way I don't know if that argument necessarily makes sense and obviously we're not talking about legal stuff here but um, you don't get a free pass for having had a hard life unfortunately the world doesn't work like that maybe it should but it don't so it's still an interesting conversation and an interesting question okay. Bill DeWitt, who is a common commenter who I often end up shouting out because he writes good comments. Thank you, Bill. Good to see you on this one. When you mentioned the fact that evil acts aren't always punished in the real world, it gave me a thought that I kept in mind while watching that for a normal, well-adjusted person, good and evil acts can often be their own punishment or reward. As intelligent social creatures, our brains have evolved to reward us with good feeling when we help others and punish us with guilt when we hurt others. Gross simplification, but I agree. Rudy's attempt to save others in his previous life, I think, indicates that he fundamentally desires to be a good person, and so I cannot think of him as an evil person. I would personally characterize him as a failed person. Now he has a major problem, having isolated himself for 20 years, with his most prominent forms of contact with the outside being light net novels and arrow gay, he doesn't realize when some of his own behaviors are wrong. This does not absolve him of his behavior, but I feel it opens the door for forgiveness if he can grow and put such things behind him. 
I think this is eloquently put and well put. Um, the first idea that you bring up in the first paragraph is something that we've talked about in Poon Poon a lot, this concept that your own conscience is the place where hell exists and you will punish yourself or award yourself based on your own interpretation of your own behavior. And I think that's a great comment and a great point to build up, uh, bring up about Rudius. What I will say is, given Rudius' past and history, he may not have the skills to do that, like to judge himself, right? And I think if we combo this with the previous comment, I think a lot of what our brains have evolved to reward us for doing and not doing comes from being social. And I think that you can stunt your development in that way if you avoid those social behaviors. Um, I think... Personally, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think, for example, shame, while it's a horrible thing and it feels awful, is a social construct of sorts. That's not what I mean. I don't mean social construct. Is a, a social evolutionary beneficial trait. When you do something that the whole of the populace goes, Ugh, and you go, oh god, oh, I feel so bad about having done that. I feel so guilty and ashamed. I will never do that again. No, that's not necessarily how shame works, because shame is semi-counterproductive sometimes but but still that's the goal of it is to prevent people from acting outside the bounds of their social norms right and if he doesn't have those then there's no there's no conscience to tell him that whatever he's doing is wrong so it's sort of double stunted not only is he stunted in what he thinks is ca he's capable of and what he's willing to do but he doesn't have that conscience voice in the back of his head that's developed over time interacting with other people who act as that conscience outside of you until you internalize it um he doesn't have the ability to like judge himself effectively like lack of self-awareness is a, a core part of people who don't interact with other people frequently. And we th I think we see that in Rudy immediately and already. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah, another another comment, uh, this one from Soladic Sayat, who which comments on a couple of things, but also brings up the idea of being harsh and un unempathetic to Hikikomori and Neat. Um, I don't think I am, sorry. I don't want to say that Neat equals bad person. I do agree with Bill DeWitt on the idea that that being a Hiki or being a Neat is is a problem um um but I, I don't think there's like some grand moral reason necessarily that it's a problem i mean i do but i wouldn't indict somebody for that i think it's just self-destructive um again coming from somebody who's done it for fairly large periods of time not decades obviously but fairly large periods of time um and and has a tendency i have a tendency to absolutely withdraw from people um no i don't i don't think that having social anxiety or agoraphobia or whatever it is uh that leads to it is necessarily wrong but i do think it can lead to you becoming really really fucked up in the head uh really really fucked up in the head and i think that there's a high correlation between the two um, I think you can very easily become a very hateful, uh, disconnected, detached individual. And so I think the chances of leading to some kind of unethical either behavior or situation or just unethically harming yourself, because I do believe that's an ethical failing uh, uh, to, to defeat yourself, to be self-destructive in that way, I do think it leads to it. So I don't know. I, I maybe the chance of that unethical possibility um, should preclude the uh, the the foundation of it. I, I don't I don't really know. It's not something that I can honestly that I can talk about. I think it's something where we have to watch the specific situation of what Rudius is going through and what he's going to do after it, uh, and judge it on its own merits. At least I think so. I don't know. This one has a little bit more nuance. This is Disturbed Gamer 667 One thing I think you might have glossed over about someone becoming a Hikikomori is that generally there's a reason they became like that. Nothing exists in a vacuum. He's still absolutely in charge of his own actions, but those actions are influenced by his past. To me, he seems like someone who never got the chance to grow emotionally and, or socially, and as such became a man-child. Very true. Um, and I, I do think that the word man-child is pretty perfect here, now especially that he is a man in a child's body, but he's also a child in a man's body in a child's body. But he's still a man, right? And so we still have to ask all these questions about his actual age and stuff. I also love the comment from Rabid Copy. As someone who will be experiencing the show as Tiabu does, I'm not really sure how to weigh in on our MC and gauging how problematic he is as a character at this point. Yeah, at this point, we haven't seen anything. There, There's nothing, really. It's just guesses. Um, neat, check. He Pervert, check. Potential Lolicon, check. Makings of a good person? Not really. The worst person to exist? Probably not. Part of me feels less concerned about what he did in his past life and more interested in what he will do in his new life. Yo, same. Absolutely. I don't care what he did in his past life, really. 
Um, will redemption happen or will he fall further and cement himself as a no good creep? Looking forward to see where this series goes and what all the hubbub is about later on. Yeah, me too, man. Me too, man. Um, yeah, I'm far more interested in what he'll do in his new life as well, but all of that is going to be informed by where he came from in the past life, and that, I hope, is what I'm focusing on, because I'm interested in his position in the past and how that will influence the future, as that's going to be the thing that we're going to end up talking about a lot, given that it's an isekai, and that's what makes sense. Um, Rafael Sobjik, uh, I still don't know how to pronounce your name, man. I don't know, man, if you ask me, sacrificing your life to save people you don't know infinitely outweighs being a neat and a pervert. People act like he was a serial killer in his past life. Yeah, he's fully not a serial killer in his past life. He's just living a not terribly upstanding life. Is it evil? No. Is it good? No. Um, and yeah, no, sacrificing your life to save people is definitely a cool, cool bit of behavior. However... I don't think that one good action outweighs bad actions. Then again, you know, however to the however, we don't really know that he's made any bad actions necessarily. He's just had a, a shitty unfulfilled life and he feels like it's shitty and unfulfilled and wishes it were different. That doesn't make him bad. It does make him a failure and a waster of his own life, which sucks. And that could be because of reasons, right? I'm, I Granted, there are reasons that he's a hikikomori, almost guaranteed, but it's still a failing. It is, right? Is it not? Is it not? Can you... I, I, I'll ask this to any of the people who argued this. Do you think being a hikikomori is healthy? Or will you argue that it's not unhealthy? Because I'll argue that it's unhealthy every day of the week. I'll, I'll guarantee it. I was in it. It's not healthy. And if you're in it and you've convinced yourself that it's healthy, you wrong, baby. You wrong. Yeah, I do think this is an important one. This one comes out from uh, Nickmer. Is Rudy a man or is Rudy a boy? Well, he has the memories and experience from his old life, but he's got a new body, a developing brain, chemistry and hormones running wild. So the developing brain, I don't know, because he's able to, to consciously think when he's a baby. But, fair enough. A developing brain, chemistry and hormones running wild. How do those things work together or against each other? He already says that he thinks he learned the language fast because he's young. Try learning a new language at 30 plus. It's not very easy speaking from experience, and I'll back that experience up. Well, I'm not 30 plus, but it still is getting harder. Um, well said, says Raphael. Uh, one of the first things Rudy said is that Zenith didn't arouse him, and I won't continue in that because apparently there are mild spoilers there, so that's fine. Pretty interesting. Um, pretty interesting. And I think we'll end with Soldat's comments. One comment, one of the reasons I was so intrigued with the story from almost the start is that I always wondered what's going to happen when he grows up. That simple thought made me interested in following the show when it started airing, despite thinking the first episode was good, but not really that amazing, like you kind of did. Because while he's certainly exploiting the fact that he's a kid to get away with stuff he shouldn't be able to get away with, surely that can't keep happening for too long, right? Surely. But we'll see. And with that... I think we'll end the comments spotlight and move on over to episode two of Mushoku Tensei and see what our jobless boy gets up to. During our first episode of Mushoku Tensei, we met the boy, met the new family, um, saw a little flash of his previous life, mostly the end of it, and uh, uh, started growing up and learning that Rudy himself has some propensity for magic use, specifically water magic, though I don't know if that'll br branch out into other kinds of magic as well. Um, and given this fantastic revelation to his parents, they hired a magic tutor, a young seeming girl named Roxy who has arrived and has begun teaching magic to the boy genius Rudius. Or maybe man, man boy genius, child man, man child, I don't know, uh, is going to teach him magic. Cool. So, uh, that being the case, I've got episode two of Mushoku Tensei sitting up and ready to go. It's at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video. We're using the Motbob subs again. Great, great. A uh, picture-in-picture version with the video up there will be available in the description down there, and a timer-based version will be up on YouTube. You're watching it right now. If you want to uh, sync up your own copy with the timer-based version, you're more than welcome to do so. Just get your copy ready, because uh, the Beep Beep Timer to Count You Down will be coming at you right now. Also, early access is on Patreon. Go check it out if you want to get more videos. Beep Beep Timer. So this is Oomst's funeral? Oh shit, did they did they it's people who died in the crash? Oh, watching some prawn. Watching lots of prawn.
Ow. Oh, shit. Well, he's about to get his shit kicked in. Hello. Uh-oh. Well, looks like he didn't pay his rent. That's the guess, at least. I, d I actually don't know. So that wasn't the car. What What is going on? His parents died? Maybe. No. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Ah. We have a fight. We have an intersection. We have a car speeding. We have a truck careening. They're right in it. And he'll leap forward. Cool. And now we get our noise. Mmm. Okay, not just water magic then. Ow. Fuck, that's hot. <laughs> yeah. They're really going at it, eh? No. <laughs> Please stop fucking. <laughs> That's so messed up. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah, let's turn it around. Mm hmm. Oh, how, how kind of you. No, oh, fucking asshole. Oh, okay. Little time skip. Cool. <laughs> of course. Of course not. Uh, but you're trying. <laughs> Come on. Holy shit, dude. Clunk. <laughs> For sure. Well, of course. Oh, what? Yeah, I thought that was because you were small. Oh! That's one letter off. Hi. Okay, getting an expo dump, but it's in the form of a class and it makes sense. Fun! Got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's picking his nose with a pencil. Oh, that's just the ring. That's literally the frames for the ring. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Of course he would think that way. I'm, I mean, how team... T minus zero episodes until they do. Green hair, red gem. Is she actually a demon or was she lying? I don't know. That <laughs> fucking asshole. I was waiting for it. Uh-huh. Very well. The nice guy skill, fucking asshole. This fucking guy. Blech. 
Very <laughs> spark plugs of love. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Oh, my guy. No. No. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Oh, wow, another six months. Oh, shit. Double magic. Firecracker magic. Cool. <laughs> the wooden sword. Ero clunk, ero voing, and he's gonna die. All right, great. <laughs> so helpful. I don't think you're ever gonna be good at swords, bro. Gum bottle. How far are we gonna skip now? Oh, it's another season. Oh, Stafu. Brain magic. Are there any repercussions to using magic on a large scale? Great animation on those kids. Uh-oh. What? Oh. Oh. Fuck. Constantly shamed and brutalized. Yep. Hiding from everybody, including myself. Really? Why won't... Uh, did you live on the demon continent? Is it just scorched earth horror? Sup, Rudy? Yes. Randoa. Okay. Hmm. Do you want to go there? Is that your goal? Sounds pretty good. Especially if you're a fucking genius and you can be on top. Did you go to Ranoa? Right. So that's three. No, you need a real master. Doste? Because she doesn't have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, but you're still my teacher. Hierarchies? Trying real hard, but she can't. She just sucks at it, huh? Comparatively. No genius. All right. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Man, that must be some crispy pig skin. It's five. Eat that whole fucking whole fucking turkey. Well, uh, Dad, you've had a little bit much to drink, and that's not the way that that works usually. That was a very wide blade. <laughs> Wow, it's all gone. Sick. Oh, 
Neat. A thing I can't use. Thanks, Dad. I don't have proficiency in martial weapons, dude. I don't have proficiency in martial weapons, Father. Yes! Yeah. Sure. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so hire a swordsman to protect you. Tonk. <laughs> Sick, that's what I'm talking about. Now that's the real shit. Let's go. <laughs> can we get a can we get a shot of the dad being like yeah, there we go. <laughs> Well, I don't get it. He wanted a he would have wanted a sword. Is that a staff wand? A wand and staff? A staff and wand. Yeah. That's an arcane focus. Okay, <laughs> you should have had this the whole time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Still calling you Shisho. Oh. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you could be full of it, dude. Humble little bastard. <sighs> Right, so we're gonna have to move to new pastures. Uh oh. Time for me to go. Great angle choices, great location choices, great shots. Right. Wow, the two faces together. Wow. Truly waiting for him. Got it. And then you broke your own promise. Yep, and you keep breaking that promise and it gets harder. Nope. That's the harder part of the test. Not in this world, buddy. It's a different, different kind of monster that he fears. Yikes. Nope. Scared of the outside, baby. No, oh, she is not that weak. <laughs> nope. <laughs> ah, I'm 20 feet away from my house. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Pass, pass through the gate. Nope, let's see it. Let's see a, a step through the... Yep, 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 yep. Step through the thre th threshold. Freedom. Great looking horse, by the way. Great looking Clydesdale. Even harder to do than a normal horse because it's got a different uh, proportions. Hey, look, we did it. You're alive. Fucking, fucking crazy, dude. People are like out here and they're not they're not laughing at you. It's crazy. Alright, don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Straight ahead, straight ahead. <gasps> they didn't he didn't yell at me or make fun of me? Yeah, she's been helping them with crops and shit. Like making their lives happen.
Hey. That's the question. There it is. Well, you just haven't met the Tundere yet. I'm sure there is one. <laughs> Steel, you'll find somebody who might make fun of you, I'm sure. Looks big and empty. Very explodable. <laughs> If you need to explode it. So what's the test? Okay. I think you only can. Okay. No, we're doing it because it's destructive. Yeah, that's gonna be like a tidal wave or something. Oh, we're doing zoomies. We're doing spinny zoomies. Wow. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of rain. Didn't even have time to check for a panty shot. Okay, right, there's healing. Jesus, we're just gonna murder a horse with lightning today? Holy shit! Oh my god! Tree bursts into fire. Now you have to- Yeah, you sure? Okay. Well, this is gonna go interestingly. We got time. Yay, my little willy wand. Oh, yeah, protective shell. Good idea. Will he get any sort of flash through? Any sort of trauma? Mm hmm. How do we overcome that? Because we're not going to let her go. Great shot. Great looking. This is going to be hella powerful. Sweet. Cool sequence. So go white. Hmm, love the color shift. <laughs> so how do we overcome that? Because we gotta keep her staying around. Sick. Sick. Cool. Red. <laughs> hmm. Boo. Yeah, the Paolo. <laughs> Come on, man. Headpats. Do it. No, do it. 
Fuck. What? Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay, does it do anything? <laughs> no magical properties? Okay, toss it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, bye. Well, it's gonna go in an unexpected direction because she's not staying gone for long. There's no chance. Oh. Up. Oh. Oop. Good running scene. Great light transition. Oh, that's it. Okay. Cute. And most importantly, yeah, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, obviously. I don't think you're going to stop carrying it completely, but yeah, good shit, dog. She kind of did, though. Reasonable. <laughs> my my guy. My guy, why you gotta undercut everything like that? Oh, this has gotta be the OP. But sitting as an ED, right? Because this is our first real song. Actually, this could be an ED. That's gorgeous. Lots of uh, added effects for the pedals and stuff, but gorgeous. Break everything, break it all if it's for your sake. Oh. That is character. That is also character. That other character had green hair. I wonder if she's got a red gem. And there's Roxy. So having established that relationship, like, that's gotta come back, but when and where? He's too young to go out on his own, or, like, go to magic school or whatever. So I don't know. Seven, six. A friend. Interesting. We could use a friend as opposed to a she-show. Cool. So this could be ED or it could be OP as ED. I don't really know. It feels more ED-ish to me. So maybe we'll get the OP next episode. That seems exciting. This episode is kind of transitional, kind of expansionist, expansionary, expanderino. Um, a lot of a lot of little character things, but not a lot of grand development. Um, let me think and and see if I can come up with more of a theme to to go with this discussion i'm not sure okay so our main through lines are the relationship between roxy and rudy of course and then this overcoming of trauma specifically going outside we still haven't overcome any of the trauma around being abused or bullied or hurt or people laughing at you but the specific fear of going outside is overcome um what is the oh, it's welcome to the NHK? Uh, a lot of this stuff reminds me a lot of welcome to the NHK with all the faces laughing at the guy and all that stuff. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but same sort of concept and conceptualization. And I think it's pretty darn effective at landing and bringing that home to us. We open on this sort of unexplained funeral sequence, and I think that we're meant to infer that these are his parents dying and he's missing. And then they send a squad to go and get him and kick him the fuck out of this room. Looking at this stuff, 
Got some cool posters. Got a Guilty Gear uh, poster. Got some other shit. Got his PC, his bed, all his trash everywhere, his cum tissues, and all the stuff that you need to be a good old, good old Nito. Got some figures over here still in boxes. Great. Lots of books, as he says. Great. A nice, horrifying life. And we zone in all, all, in all of these things to show him being a fat, ugly bastard, because that's what we're trying to convey here, and it, it do be working. Ah, keep it down, and no. Uh, he tries to fight, and no, and this guy gets really pissed about what's on the TV, so they kick him out. I assume this is his family kicking him out of, uh, his more, more extended family kicking him out of his parents' house. That's my expectation here, because his parents are dead, and he didn't even show up to the funeral. That's some fucked up shit. That's some fucked up shit on pretty much every level. And so he wanders the world wondering why why he deserves this. And then, of course, the careening, uh, careening truck, and he decides to jump out in that direction and does so. Interesting. And cool. And pretty much already what we knew. But it's great to be able to see it and remind us of where this character came from and where he is now. And that's pretty cool. I think it works really well. It does expand the horrors of who he is, right? There's something, there's something pretty fucked up about being so disconnected from a family that seems to be letting you live in a home without, you know, rent or whatnot, and not even going to their funerals. I assume because he's afraid to. But damn, that's really fucked up. So, we contrast his, at least the way I see it is, we contrast his deep, like, anxiety and fear and humiliation even shame with his parents utter lack of shame right and i think that's a, a clever contrast right his parents are going at it with nobody nobody should give a fuck it doesn't matter to them they don't care what people hear they know these walls are thin and they're gonna bang they're, this is what they're doing they're alive and they're not afraid of living their lives right they're not afraid of anybody finding out I mean, hey, they're pretty wealthy, given that they own a house with more than one room, so at least Rudy isn't in the same room they're in. They're not just kicking him out. <laughs> no more younger brothers, please. Okay, so he comes out here and he sees Roxy uh, having a mood, which is certainly a thing. Um, And he's, he's a jerk about it. <laughs> and we get some jerkish faces, but he doesn't actually do anything about it. He does pretend that he, does, he hadn't seen anything, which is great. And he moves up in magic, and he's a pervert. He just continues to be a perverted protagonist in every possible way. I don't like it. I don't, I'm, I don't love it. It's funny, but it's not that funny. It's, it's kind of... It's a cliche, right? And if you know it's a cliche, right? To have a pervy protagonist. Whatever justification you have for it, it's a, it's a, it's a fulfillment thing, right? It's a it's a fantasy fulfillment thing. Even to the point of like, oh, you leave your room and the cute girl who is your who is your tutor is sort of in a sexual act and you see it. Ooh. It's all for a purpose. And mostly it's for us, I think, in this episode. Now, I guess it's still in Rudy's perspective and it it could be way worse. But it's still a lot. It's it's a lot, and he's real pervy. It seems like he didn't. He doesn't need to be necessarily. It's fine. So she explains that she's a demon, which is completely new, uh, and introduces the term called the spurred, uh, where the spurred went on a rampage. And apparently, she's not a spurred. I'm not entirely sure. But if you ever meet somebody with green hair and a red gem. The spurred will fuck you up. Yeah, emerald green hair and what looks like a red gem on their forehead. Cool. So I assume we're going to meet a character like that in like a minute. And she sometimes look like that. looks like that. I actually like this moment. You should save things like that to say to a girl you like somebody someday. And he immediately pulls the smoothest move, which is be like, but I like you, miss. Oh, buddy. I like this from her. Um... Say that ten years from now and maybe I'll believe you is pretty cool. And of course, the dating sim lessons. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, spark plugs of love, no clue what he means. And then, of course, he peeks, because of course he does, and she catches him, because of course she does, and that's great. I appreciate that, at least. This is cool. In general, our effects animation has been stellar, and it continues to be over the course of this episode, both here and in the Saint-level water magic that we get a little bit later. 
animation good. Papa teaches him swords, and he can't learn swords. And here it is. So we finally start to get some inference here. What if they were to? He he he. Sadistic smiles. Phones out. Photographing you. Why this specific circumstance? Why is this what you fear? Well, because you've been here before. Classic Japanese high school hazing style stuff. Strip somebody naked and take pictures of them. And that's exactly what we see here. And he wants to stay static. You're the only master I need. You're all, you're all I need. And it's her humility and respect that breeds respect, I think. And I think that's my thematic pull from this episode. Respect breeds respect. A person who is disrespected by everyone in their lives sees no reason to respect themselves or the world around them. A person who has shown respect for their talents and is in a place where whatever talents they have can actually shine is capable of forming respectful relationships with other people and does so with Roxy eventually to some extent. Now she has her own arc in this episode, which is questioning her self-worth. She sees this boy who's better than she is innately and will become a better mage than she is, given that if he continues practicing. And she, someone who has dedicated herself to this, is hurt by that. It humbles her. But she's capable of that humility, and that makes her strong enough to do it. At least that's how I see it. Little birthday thing is cute. The way we, we pass through time, I find really effective. The jumping six months in the future, it works. It's, it's, it's effective. We just tell the beats of the story that we need, instead of feeling like we need to try the entire thing. Swordsmanship has the advantage too long. And she gives him a book, which he actually wants, which is great. And a wand, which he'll hold on to for at least a short while, because I've seen pictures of him with a much bigger staff wand thing. And he looks out to that gate and sees a barrier there. A barrier made of memory. A barrier made of a horrible memory. People yelling mushroom dick, which is hilarious, because everybody has a mushroom dick, let's be honest. You've seen what dicks look like. I guarantee you have, right? They look, they all look kind of the same. They're not that different. Get strung up and laughed at. What did he do to deserve this? Maybe nothing. Regardless, we discover exactly why he stayed in his room all the time. And we discover that he was, in many ways, forced to. Just looking out the window... A terror. People waiting for him to laugh at him. No safety. No security. That despair is waiting for me outside. I promised myself I'd get serious, but my body refuses to keep up. That's because you've enabled yourself to continue breaking your promises. Every promise that you break, every time that you go, I'm going to get up and do something today, and then you don't, you make it easier for yourself to continue doing that. Much easier. Here's the thing. It is understandable why he is in this circumstance, and why he acts the way that he does. Fully understandable, fully a logical leap from step to step to step to step. But, at every step, of that path, he has a choice. Everyone always has a choice. And every day that he stays in this place, he has a choice, and he knows it. And to some extent, it's the shame of knowing it that keeps him in that cycle. Shame doesn't always work. We talked about it at the very beginning, how shame can be useful in a group setting for preventing you from carrying out behavior that would be unacceptable in a group setting. But when the shame is turned into ostracization and you're not allowed to be part of the group regardless of what you do, ooh, that doesn't work. And when the shame is self-inflicted continuously and worse, what he is ashamed of is not what he should be ashamed of. Does that make sense? Because the places where he's been ostracized or bullied are not, not valid. Not to say that there's valid bullying, but to some extent that is what I'm saying. Someone who does something wrong and is ostracized from a community because of it, that seems reasonable to me. Depending on the severity of what wrong thing they've done. So far, we don't see that Rudy, previous Rudy has done anything necessarily wrong. 
except be, be something that was laughable to other people, be a joke. But then, but then, sorry to do this, but I'm going to switch gears really quick. Because I, I can't help think this, it's, it's too perfect that it happened the day after I read this. So I have, to, I have to think of a line that we read yesterday, or a sequence of lines that we read yesterday in Oyasumi Poon Poon. Line from Sachi. I'm going to spoil some Poon Poon. Not really, it's not really a, a spoiler, I'm just going to read you some lines that come from a place that makes sense here. At the end of the day, we live in a competitive society. Opting out because you're afraid to lose is pathetic. And justifying it with the fact that you aren't good at communicating with people is self-indulgent. But if you want to use your troubled childhood as an excuse, then by all means, go ahead. How I live now is what's most important to me. So trying and losing is much scarier to me than dying. But I have to do it. I'm sure someone like you who just rolls up and rolls over and gives up will never understand. And then the other, the character that he's, she's talking to says, like, responds to that in the negative. And then she explains her life and where she came from. And how she's changed it so that she could choose herself. It's a simplistic, stupid motivation, but my confidence is based on moving forward. I have ideals, I'll do what I have to, and I think that's the best me I can be. When I see you unable to make a move because you're so sad and anxious, it's not so much that it's irritating. It's like watching the me that I left behind, and it makes me feel guilty. Your anxieties and depression have no root. I understand that so much better than you. That's why I can't forgive you and why I can't leave you alone. You're lucky. Usually when someone's being pathetic like you, no one ever stops to help. And this, this drops our character out of his, his depression in a moment. Some of the things don't precisely apply here. But the one idea, and, and neither does your anxieties and depression have no root because they do have a root. They do. But to claim that that's unovercomable, impossible, is just self-hurting, right? It's self-destructive because it is, it is something that can be overcome. It doesn't ring true to me. And I, know, I know it's not true because I know how I feel on days where I don't want to blank. And I know that I could push through that. And I know how it feels when you don't, when you know you could. And it hurts. But, but, what hurts most is that you didn't do it. And that's the thing that can keep you not doing it, which is crazy, but it's true. Huh. Huh. Okay, so he leaves his sad hikiki, li hikiki life. And we get these great visuals of him experiencing this as new Rudy and old Rudy experiencing next to him. It's really, really lovely. And that's our setup for he never wants to go out for some reason. I get it. You're scared of horses. No, it's not that. And I love this line from her. You act your age when I least expect it with the little head tilt too. And then she just yoinks him and throws him on the horse. I can't. I can't. The memory is there. And he closes his eyes. And the Clydesdale trots forward and walks through. And there's nothing there. It's an illusion. It's your own brain, right? It's not a thing. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Oh, wait. They're not. And the truth becomes obvious. People in this world aren't out to get you. And that should be true in the real world, too. But it wasn't for one period of time for old Rudy. And so he internalized it for the rest of his life. That's pretty interesting, interestingly written. Also, the horse looks great. I, I just mentioning that yeah, the horse does look great. And we do some magic. And it's fucking dope. I think my favorite part of this is the moment where, yeah, she brings her, her thing up in front of her face. And then she flips it here so that the the little magical crystal is directly in front of her super sick very fun very like sword forward mulan swords at the side mulan right same kind of idea and these big sweeping wooshy motions are are lovely um and continue to be i think the best shots in the show uh for obvious reasons these big sweeps 
are really nice. And we get one a little earlier as she's just walking forward. We get the zoomies. Near home zoomies. Um, good. Big, large-scale zoomies stuff for our first real castings of powerful magic. And we see that she's a little bit out of control of her magic and fully saps her horse, which is horrifying. God. I thought we were just going to kill a horse today. We really did. Oh, my God. But we don't. We cast some healing and we save the horse. And so he ends up casting his own magic as well while thinking about all these wonderful things and how he needs to prove that Roxy has done something great here. At least that's how I see it. And we see him smiling and waving this wand back and forth in this, uh, in this rainstorm. Wow. This is probably the best cut in the episode. I think. Because of these, these subtle on-frame little, little movements in between that really sell it. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. We move to the next day. Glorious, glorious color patterns and color choices. Um, because everything sort of swapped to be a little more ruddy, a little more more reddish and pinkish and glorious, uh, as the sun rises again. And she talks about uh how far you've come and how she no longer has much to teach you. We beg her to stay and end up leaving off with just a thank you and a charm. And a grand thank you, a real thank you, and a respect. Again, respect breeds respect. If somebody, somewhere, had shown the slightest bit of respect to old Rudy, there's a chance, maybe, that it could have been enough to pull him out of his hole of despair, right? It's real hard to get out of that pit. Sometimes it takes a dramatic change to do so. I think that's true. But I think it can be done. I, I know it can be done. I know it can be done. I've done it. Cool. Pretty solid episode. Some interesting stuff to talk about. Not as deep as I maybe expected, but that's okay. Um, maybe I missed something in here, but I don't think so. I think I, I think I picked up what the show was putting down. We'll see. Pretty good overall. Moved through a couple of years of time in the span of an episode without without a sweat, without breaking a sweat at all. Learned some dope ass water magic. One thing that we're kind of missing is a next step. It just doesn't exist right now. Um, like a what's next. I don't know. He's already learned all this water magic. Get a new tutor, learn different magic. Fast forward a few years, an adventure. Next episode is called Friends, so I would expect we would meet somebody else who's one of the main characters, but how that'll happen, I don't know. Traveler passing through town, something crazy. Cool. Whatever ends up happening, I'm looking forward to seeing Rudius continue to grow and to continuing to discuss this show with all y'all. Thanks for writing stuff in the comments. Keep them civil, please. And I'll see ya next time for more Mushoku Tensei. See you there. Peace.